another candidate uh, that I feel like, once again, he's one of those people that does not get enough credit is Andrew Yang. Um, Andrew Yang, uh, one of the clips that I saw, called out the media for what it is, right? He was like, he, he was like, oh, we're not really, like, this is theater. This is reality TV. We all have makeup on our faces and, like, CNN, oh, he was like, what was the last thing, after the last f first debate, CNN didn't talk about wh what I stand for. They All they said was he's a business guy that didn't wear a fucking tie. It's like, that's what the media's doing. The media... The media looks at Andrew Yang, and they don't want to talk about uh, what he says says about automation taking over the jobs, and you know, like that's the future. That's that's on its way, and we need to make a contingency plan for all these people that are going to lose their work because they're they're not because of automation. They're going to lose their jobs, and then what are they going to do? So we need to instate something like universal basic income so that these people that lose their jobs can try to go and do something different without worrying about money because this something different might take a little bit longer to become financially sustainable. And these could be innovations, these could be creative, these could be solutions. Tr uh, retraining, like those retraining programs could happen and you don't have to worry about the employer losing any money because the state's covering it because they, because if somebody has a universal basic income or a freedom dividend, as he likes to call it. Andrew Yang's interesting. I've, I've listened to a few interviews with him. He's very affable. He's very smart. Um, he has a really good way of speaking. He doesn't talk down to anybody. He's very informative and, uh, and measured in his responses. Uh, and, I, and I did like the... I, like He was one of the very few people that called out the media for what it was. He called out the media for, for just being a show. It's theater. This is not fucking real. Nobody here gives a shit about what the American people uh, are, are, are suffering from. You know, nobody gives a shit. No, nobody in the media really, really fucking cares. Uh, Anderson Cooper really doesn't give a shit about, you know, uh, the, the average uh, factory worker losing their goddamn job and not being able to afford food. About any any employee in the country that can't afford their health care. What the fuck does Anderson Cooper have to give a shit about this? He's got everything covered. He's a millionaire. What the fuck does he give a shit? And he called him out for it. He's like, all you're doing is, is creating theater for people. The media should not be creating theater. The media should be information. You should you should be the ones encouraging critical thought through informative decision making. Like that's you should be doing that. But you're not. You're just theater. We don't talk about UBI. People are scared to talk about UBI. Right, because UBI would fundamentally change the way that the economy runs. the The main thing that the UBI would start doing uh, is because we're going to talk about basic stuff, right? What, what universal basic income? What are these basic needs? Uh, in my view, it is uh, food, water, shelter, health, maybe internet. People get upset when I say the internet, but uh, it is so important when the internet has become uh, such an important tool for information gathering that if people don't have access to information they become prey to to the propaganda wing of the American arms industry the American war economy the goddamn corporate media and that's all they listen to and they don't have real information and they fucking think that J Joe Biden or Kamala Harris uh, are, are fine and it's like, no, they're not. Well, how can they find this information when their internet connection and their internet services are so bad? So that's why I say the internet is is most probably something that's a basic need. I think it's a basic need that that uh, should be provided to people. Everybody should have this uh, this access to information. And because we talk about what with that those things being basic needs. Once you put that under the umbrella of universal basic income and say, like, we're going to cover it for you, one, you're basically taking those things out of the capitalist market. Shelter, food, water, internet, health. That means that private insurance companies and pharmaceutical industries don't... Well, insurance companies would probably go out of the window... Uh, if, if healthcare is covered by the public option. Um, but they... It's 
complicated, I guess, that as I'm kind of thinking about it, it's, it, it might just give people enough money to cover their, uh, their health insurance so that they don't have to like think about whether they can pay their health insurance or eat dinner. Um, that should not be a choice that people should make. It's unfortunately a choice that people have to make right now. And uh, I think UBI would address that. Um, but it, w whatever it is, it basically means that you can't make insurance, health insurance, a profit incentive. You can't make someone's shelter a profit incentive. You can't make uh, food a prop or water a profit incentive. Got people like the the CEO of Nestle, who I've uh, pissed off on Twitter. Uh, pretty proud of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're like, it's not a human right. It's it's something that we can make money off of. It's like no, you shouldn't make you shouldn't need to make money off of water. It just it completely re it changes what we can and can't make a profit off of, and that changes the dynamics of capitalism. It puts restraints on it. It puts ethical guidelines to it. If it if it's something that people need, should you go after it with a profit incentive? With I will also say an unlimited profit incentive. Almost holding them ransom to say like you need this thing, well then give me all your money. Well you want it, right? Like that that sort of extortion that is under capitalism does not exist with universal basic income. Now, I, I, have, I have mentioned this in several videos. I need to do more homework on Andrew Yang, and I have been meaning to do more homework on Andrew Yang. Uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of, of uh, time commitment and, and putting that time aside and into it. Uh, because I like him. I, I really do. I, I, I think he's, a, he's, you know, he's got an interesting idea, and I think... Um, you know, he's a he's someone that is kind of thinking ahead in that term because uh, we're not thinking about automation at all. Like, what's going to happen whenever we start bringing out automated cars? What's going to happen when we start bringing out um, automated factories, which is already happening, right? Like, grocery stores still have the self checkout. That's essentially that's essentially the start of automation. What are we going to do? We have to answer those questions. Andrew Yang is bringing that up. And fucking CNN, MS, they don't have any interest in addressing any of those things. He's brought this conversation to the table. And these corporate media organizations have no interest in carrying that conversation forward. Because they want to keep going and pushing forward on the American war economy. On, the, uh, on, that, on that arms deal. Pushing that fear and pushing that division. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring what's going on uh, in, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY, independent, socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.